The Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. EliteForm.com, IgnitionAPG.com, PlayUSA at PLAEUSA.com, and Soranex Exercise Equipment at Soranex.com. And now, the Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast. Welcome to Iron Game Chalk Talk with your host, Ron McKeever. Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the max. Let's go! Let's go! Everything you got! On this podcast, hear Coach McKeefer's straight talk about training, featuring the top strength and conditioning professionals from around the world. And now, here's your host, Ron McKeever. Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. I'm your host, Ron McKeefrey, and this is episode number 187. Excited to have Dr. Ian McEwen with us today. Ian is the head development, head of athletic development for Port Adelaide Football Club in Australia. Um, he's a guy that I've gotten to get to know over the years and, and just respect thoroughly. Um, if you remember having David, um, David Tenney on the show, uh, who I think is one of the best when it comes to the use of technology and the high performance model and all those types of things. He pointed specifically to uh, Port Adelaide as the example. And, uh, and so uh, I've followed him since that moment and, and just uh, very impressed with what they do. We, get, we talk a lot about that today on the show. We talk about their high performance model uh, with, uh, with uh, Mr. Burgess and, and their entire team. We talk about uh, their screening and diagnostic program that they use, uh, the, what they're doing during their reset period, uh, which is what they're in right now. And so we get into a lot of stuff. I know you're going to enjoy this episode. Before we do, though, I want to make sure we recognize Ignition APG uh, as a sponsor for this episode. Uh, this is the last episode uh, that Ignition will be a, a part of the show. Uh, just, you know, in 2017, we, we've changed up our sponsorship strategy or structure a little bit different and, and uh, you know even though they're they're not a sponsor they're somebody that you know just like with any of our sponsors somebody that I've used somebody that has been a part of my development somebody that I respect uh, they wouldn't be on the show without it and so I'd highly encourage you that if you're looking for a speed certification they got their strength system coming out uh, if you have athletes that that are you know going on to do combine prep uh, I wholeheartedly recommend ignition and you know the guys there, Cliff and and everybody. They just they're fantastic people. They're doing it the right way. Um, and as much as I hate that they're not involved in 2017, uh, very excited for them and the projects that they got coming about and, and things along those lines. So make sure to check them out. Follow them on social media. They're always doing some some inspiring things. And uh, just appreciate them being a part of the show for as many years as they have been. Want to get to this episode with Dr. McEwen? Sit back and enjoy, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, guys, welcome back to Iron Game Talk Talk. Super excited to have Ian McEwen, Dr. Ian McEwen from uh, Port Adelaide F FC Football Club over there, and, and affectionately known as Mackers. And as a coach, Mac from one coach Mac to a, a coach Mackers, man, I'm, I'm fired up to have you on the show, brother. Hey, man, it's it's a pleasure to be on. Thanks, thanks for, very much for having me. You know. It, uh, Ian's up bright and early. I think it's five thirty over there, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he's got, you know, he's got to get to work and all that. So the show won't be as long as normal. But um, man, we really appreciate you getting on, uh, getting up early and joining us. And in the middle of, of preseason right now, and in the middle of the grind, and and so we know how that goes, man. But hey, for the people that don't know you as well, um, just Reader's Digest version, kind of take us all the way back to Northern Ireland days and, and kind of what got you into strength and conditioning and then what's, you know, what's led you to Port Adelaide? Yeah, I'll, I'll try my best to keep it to the Reader's Digest version. As, as you said, it's been a pretty long journey for me, um, even if you just count the, the miles I've traveled. Um, so, yeah, I'm currently in Australia, but obviously originally from Northern Ireland, from a sleepy little town in County Down. Um, I worked my way through, you know, the usual. I did my undergrad back home, um, and I just happened to be around um, when I was doing my undergrad. Was whenever the sports institute started to set up. So the concept of strength and conditioning and high performance sport was just sort of introduced to 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 Northern Ireland and to the sports around there. So I was able to get in at the at the very developmental age. 
for a lot of sports. So a lot of, you know, you know, as I was learning, the sports were learning too. So it actually gave us, you know, we could all make mistakes at the same time. So that that was actually a really, really nice thing, um, a nice thing for me. I think that, you know, in terms of what got me into strength and conditioning, um, you know, I did you know, the tired SNC coach journey. You know, didn't quite make it as an athlete, but but got into how things worked, and you know, really it really made things click. And I think um, it was when Nathan Nathan Parham was on. Uh, yeah. A few weeks ago, you know, he said, you know, he's a bit of a bit of a rat bag, um, <laughs> and then all of, everything sort of clicked whenever he started to think about you know biology and physics and stuff right. in terms of in terms of sport. And I, I must admit, it, it did ring true. I sent him a text after it, after I listened to him, um, saying so it was pretty much the same thing for me. I, you know, muddled my way through school, just wanted to play sport and just have fun, um, and then sort of grew up pretty quickly um, after that and. Yeah, once once things clicked in terms of you know how how the world worked and and how I can relate that back to to making making humans better. Um, so yeah, I did all the there's many coaching badges. Just coached everybody. So rather than just strength and conditioning, just anything. So I was you know field hockey, badminton, cricket, rugby, whatever whatever the sport was. I was more than happy to to help people and particularly you know young kids out and just take them through um, you know summer schemes and like sports camps and stuff like that and that's probably where I cut my teeth in terms of coaching you know planning sessions you know coordinating groups making sure that other staff were in the right places making sure you could be responsible for you know young boys and girls that was a that was a that was a big deal whenever you're you know 18 19 um yeah and then yeah working my way through the the strength and conditioning um and and sports institute in Northern Ireland where I where I said I, I got to I got some fantastic opportunities, and just by the the war of attrition, really, um, I ended up stumbling my way into the head of department um, way too early. Um, I, I felt I had I had so much to learn as a coach. Never mind try and manage other people and and teach them how to coach. I, I felt I I wasn't quite ready for that. Um, I embraced it at the time, but yeah, I felt like you know if I wanted to make my mark, I had to I had to go and become a world's best coach before I could gone back and manage anybody else so um i was lucky enough um to get a a a phd scholarship at the australian institute of sport in canberra so that was the big the big jump the the life-defining moment getting on that plane um and and resetting and restarting again so um the beauty of what i was able to do and how fortunate i was with the people not only within amazing networks and you know the system that they set up down here but um it meant that as I was doing my PhD, I was also coaching full time across a multitude of sports um, and a multitude of levels. So um, I was, I was. There's not a black hole in my in my CV, I guess. You know where people go and do a PhD and they kind of, you yeah. know, they battle the way through. I was actually a lead coach on a lot of sports, um, you know, in in national sports as well as just um, you know state organized sports as well. So that that was a really big plus for me and that really set up um my positions um at Port Adelaide so at the end of my PhD I just happened to be perfect timing Darren Burgess was coming back home from from Liverpool um and yeah I just just rode that wave ever since to be honest so uh, <laughs> so things that yeah I think I've been this is my fifth preseason there now so um yeah things are things are great we've had our challenges for sure but um yeah we're we're in a we're in a real good position professionally um, with with the club, and and I couldn't love Adelaide more. Well, we love it down here. It's um, it's been a it's been a real nice change from from Canberra. Um, if anyone's been to Canberra, they know right, it's, a, sure. a little bit, it's a little bit sleepy. It's not quite as crazy as Melbourne and Sydney, but um, it's probably a nice balance for us as right. well. So, hopefully, it's a bit long, but hopefully that 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 gets gets to the gist of it no it's awesome and i think that's you know what you know it's one of the reasons why i, I asked that question because there's so much like you mentioned with nate parnham you know so much that we can we can glean from each other and just you know we all walk kind of a similar path and we can relate to each, each other's journey so whether or not that's you know it was you know you weren't maybe the person you wanted to be before you found strength and conditioning and you got into it and found you know your calling or um, you, you, people can identify with the, this, the struggles of bouncing between jobs or, 
or whether or not that's, you know, you taking the risk and getting on a plane and going and kind of resetting or restarting. That's all. Those are all things that every strength coach that comes on the show can identify with in some capacity, you know, and right. I think it's what right. connects us, you know, whether or not it's across the world, you know, multiple time zones away or, or, um, you know, just right down the street. I think it's, it's one of the things that's cool. I think there's a lot of things I wanted to pull out of there. I mean, one being, um, one thing you said is with like with your time with in Ireland, you know, and this was my my time with uh, South Florida was, you know, I kind of grew up with the program, you know, that was a one double A program that kind of went to you know transition to one A and, and and rankings and all that, and you kind of grew up with Ireland's program, and I think as young coaches out there, if you can find those opportunities, and I, and to me that that opportunity really exists in high schools right now, you know, where mm-hmm. there's not a lot of strength coaches you know, find opportunities where you can grow up with a place because it's so important to develop all three of those areas, that technician, you know, being the world's best coach, like you talked about, but also being that manager and that entrepreneur, I think is important as well. And, um, you know, we're excited, man. We're going to Ireland, uh, for a play mm-hmm. summit this mm-hmm. year. I think, I, I think I told Pretty. you that, but, uh, we're going there in June. Yeah, so we're, we're going to have yeah, some you'll fun. Love it. Yeah. But, you'll love it. Pretty. Well, but Hey, man, you know, Along that journey, there's lots of opportunities, and and we all make mistakes every single day. But what what's been maybe the biggest mistake that you've made along that that long journey there, and, and how you learn from it? Um, I think I think you know looking back on it, and I, I don't mind reflecting. Um, if anyone knows me, they'll know I'll I'll do it quite a bit. Um, there's probably plenty plenty of mistakes, too, so many mistakes, and it's probably you know people ask, uh, you know, what would you change or whatever. And to be honest. If I changed it, then I wouldn't be where I am today. So I, I kind of, I'm too scared to change things. But I feel like, it, you know, by making those mistakes and reflecting, it's probably been the, you know, made me who I am. Um, I think, you know, from a technical point of view, probably being, you know, too down, you know, as everyone learns, you know, that they, they oh, I'm an Olympic lifting guy, and then I'm a, you know, I'm a, you know, a movement guy, and then I'm a, and sort of now I'm kind of right in the middle of right. everything, and and just use the tools as the, as they should be used, and you know you you learn that or you get told that as a kid as a as a young right. coach, but you kind of never really believe it until you get into it. So right. that's probably you know from a technical point of view, you know you, you do have to you know you have to do everything that Mike Boyle says, and then you got to do everything that um, the Olympic lifting guy says, and then you got to do everything that you know. You know, T Nation says, and then you got to kind of meet right. in the middle, and then find out what works for for who you're working with at that time. As as you're learning, you know the methods yourself, you know as as well as you know how they apply to your your athletes or your your clients or you know the people that you're the people that you're working with. You know the, that's that's probably one of the the, the you know the, the mistakes I think it's an easy it's an easy answer I know because right. everyone cringes at what they used to do, but I think you know, I, I think it's somebody I, I, some someone way smarter than me once said you know you can have 20 years of experience of the same thing 20 times or you can you know have 20 years of different experiences as you evolve and i i want to be that guy that that's sure it's evolved that's every year rather than just just turning out the same stuff every year and i think that's a you know that's that's hopefully where where i'm at and hopefully that's something um that i that i that i leave behind in my legacy uh, that's great. I think that's. I mean, that's why I always say that I'm a, a principle-based strength coach, not a philosophy-based strength coach. So I can I can learn. I can find something to learn from every single person I come in contact with. And you never know. You never know the situation that you're going to be in, and what you're going, what tool you're going to need to to to, to address the situation. Absolutely, and that's the you know everyone gets you know they have their opinions, and then they get so dismissive, particularly in strength and conditioning, which is obviously very egocentric. You know dominated um profession you know as soon as you don't agree with someone you, you give them a whack rather than just you know, right. taking a step back and maybe That's learning right. what 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 actually are they you know they're not stupid you know they're doing something for a reason you know maybe we should learn it but right yeah you know, it's too easy just to, to sit there and take pot shots sometimes and you know for sure it can be a little bit fun sometimes but it's it's not not the way we should be right right well, I think the, one of the things that, you know, that I've always known about you and, and then, you know, guys like Dave Tenney, Echo, and Brett Bartholomew, Echo, I mean, you know, you, you guys are, are, are a, a, a shining example of how the high performance model should be and how you guys go about your business, integrating the sports science with the practical application, with the coaching science and, and throwing it all together. I mean, I think that's, you know, I mean, obviously you're, you should be very proud of that and that's something that's a, a, a huge honor for those guys to kind of be saying that type of stuff, you know, but 
What do you think is it about your program? Because there's a lot of people that are doing it, right? There's a lot of people that are attempting mm-hmm. to do it. Yeah. What 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 about yeah. your situation? Do you think is different, or what's the magic sauce there? Uh, I, I think I, mean, I think you can go. The first thing you got to say is that that you know Burjo runs a he, he's put together a great a great ship. Um, to Darren's, you know, he's he's my boss and he's the one that that leads a lot of. Um, yeah, he pulls all the strings, I guess. But um, you know, and, and we work. Um, within that, I think I think that there's probably there's three things that I always talk about when when people ask those questions. I think um, primarily and and the biggest thing is that we've got a, a playing group that and people can't believe that like the way that I talk to them about you know whether it's load parameters, whether it's velocities, whether it's you know when they, when they see a GPS report, they know every number. Like they don't even need to look at it on a page. They just need to, it to be regurgitated to them real time after training. They get so involved in it, and they're you know they're they're a smart bunch. You know they're a smart bunch, and but you know so we don't have to. You know, that then leads into you know I don't need them. I'm not a cheerleader. I don't need right. to motivate. I'm telling people why they're doing some. You know, why we're doing some split leg stuff. Why we're doing okay. Well, why are we back squatting? Oh well, we're doing it for this, this, and this. All right, okay, no problem. Or new exercises. They understand why we put things together when we introduce new things whether it's stuff they don't necessarily like whether it's different types of stretching whether it's different different running drills they they kind of get it you know they they want to understand it and i sure there's you know there's a few that don't they just want right. to play sure. but for the majority you know so like that sort of lays the format so like if we give them a new piece of technology or if we want to do certain t- testing with them and that type of thing i think that you know they just they just do it they don't even don't even question it. You know, we've got a lot going on in terms of. You know, we've got PhDs. We've got uh, PhD studies going on. We've got lots of things bubbling along underneath the surface, and they just do it. and And that's that's a big thing. There's no question of that. So probably the biggest thing for and primarily is that we've got a really good playing group, mm-hmm. a really well led playing group that, that want to be part of the the new and um, the the pioneering stuff that we're trying to do. Right. Um, I think that. You know, the second thing is the, um, the the coaching group. You know, the the actual sports coaches, the football coaches. They, you know, there's no, I've never had to have any sort of discussion around. I want to be able to put this in, and they they butt heads. There's been, and that's probably something that, that, that Darren does very very well is that he right. puts together a program which 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 appeases everybody. If you know Darren, he's he's the most affable man and uh, around. Like you know, he he. Everyone, everyone loves him. So, like, he 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 deals with that really, really well from a, mm-hmm. a technical point of view, as well as from a tactical point of view, as well as from a, a physical point of view. So, you know, we've got a coaching group that support everything we do, and then just the you know the staff members that are around the program. You know, we all um, we're all different, but we're all as motivated. If, if there's a lot of similarities between motivation, um, our drive to succeed, um, just even the basic stuff like. Um, you know, when we do put new things into a program, we don't let it affect the nuts and bolts of the program. It's still about getting fit as hell. It's about getting as you know good as hell out on the field, and right. then it's about you know being as strong as hell and as moving as best as you can. So once everything can't get in the way of that, anything we do has to underpin that and just bubble along. We would talk about it bubbling along, and you know if we do sub max yo-yos if we do hrv if we do jump testing it's all part of our sessions it's all everything we do is 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 programmed as you would any other exercise or any other drill so um that that you know probably ties everything together nicely as well and then you know um because we're very fortunate in the the level of of staff that we do have the, the level of dialogue across the group you know so we talk about accuracy in on our language so we can't just say oh i think something's trending upwards or oh he, he's got a five percent difference well what does a five percent difference mean what does a trend mean right. you know, we, we we have that you know bubbling underneath and people wouldn't you know you wouldn't pick up on it if you're listening to us talking in the office but it, you know there's a there is a different level there which is just a professional respect and right. to what we do um which which adds uh, you know is another layer to what we do so i think that that's you know that's probably the three things which i think are are crucial 
and some you know and, and we're always trying to develop those yeah i think that's fantastic i i you know, i want to dig into that a little bit with you know obviously you've been a, you're in a perfect storm right you got you got a good coaching mm. group you got great players you got educated i always talk about you know the difference between the NFL and, and college sometimes is you got a more informed consumer. You got players that are more mm-hmm. in tune with their body and they're wanting to, you know, but you also have those players at that, at that level that, that they don't want anything to do with it. They don't have any understanding or they haven't been in a culture that that's, that's supported that mm-hmm. with the staff mm-hmm. and, and things along those lines. If you were to leave and you were to go to a different program that didn't have those things in place, you know, didn't have a culture in place where it was mm-hmm. accepted to wear technology or didn't have a, you know, educated players. I mean, what were some of the things that maybe you and Dan did or Darren did early, you know, to kind of get those players to a point where they understood that information or that they were, they were wanting to, to be a part of that pioneering process. Yeah. I think, I think the biggest thing is, is the trust and the belief. Um, you know, I know it's, it's, it's a little bit trite to say, but you know, they don't, they don't know how much you care until you show them right. you know, that sort of, you know, they are. and I think that that's that was that's probably one of the biggest things. Like uh, as much as we talk about technical mastery and being a great coach, you know, if, um, you know, until you really show that you, you you care about them and you actually you know want to understand them as as humans, and that's something that you know Brett talks about all the time, and he and he does such an eloquent job of talking about it. I think that that's probably the first thing, and and you know like if if. If it was just this, and to get to where we are now, like it's taking us years. Right. Um, so there's a slow drip process, and it's it's just putting things in place that you feel, you know, don't just chase the, you know, it's not an arms race, you know, right. which which is typically what people talk about it being an arms race. Just be really smart about. It. And I guess that you know it probably pulls me back to you know um, my early days whenever I was growing up as the as the as the concept of even just professional sport was was growing back home you know you, you don't have the money you don't have the resources you don't have the skills you know you got to be really smart about the the purchases you make the you know the technologies you do use the, the methods you even use you know you got to get the early wins right and that as much as you know you don't you, you want to get build trust and belief and the only way to do that is show that you're good at what you do as well so if you can start to just tease that out and take your time so um you know one of the things I, I love doing, and it's, it's sort of spent a lot of my time, is is, is developing you know, the pathways or the, the long term model. So not the, what we're going to do next week, but how does next week affect what we're going to do in a year's time, right. in two years' time? Can we build, and can you? Because know, then, you, then it gives you just that little bit more freedom to not get stressed about. Oh well, you know, FSU have 500 GPS units. Oh, well, we've got to get 600. Or you know, okay, no worries. Just let them. You know, let them right. do what they're doing. You know, we know where we're going, and and I'm. You know, if you if you put that, if you put that process in place, and you put that roadmap in place, and you and you believe in it, you you know, you can be, you can you can take the hits on the way. You can, you know, you don't need to, to stress too much about things. And as long as you're continually developing and evolving your program, that's that's the biggest thing for me. And you know. I, if we got rid of all our technology tomorrow and uh, and and any of the you know any of the, the sexy stuff that we do, I reckon that the, the biggest thing that will remain would be the trust and the the belief that what we do is 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 the most important thing. Right. And that's where that's where the you know the, the guys that you know that whether it's in sports science, whether it's in from a medical point of view or from strength and conditioning, that's where you know that's that's where we that's where we live really. Sure. Well, you mentioned you mentioned technology, and and uh, you know I've heard you speak before about some of the screening processes that you do, whether it be weekly screening or post game screening, uh, and, and trying to get that information to your players. What what is some of the screens that you use? You know these diagnostics that you're using to kind of to show the athlete where they're at, show the coaches where they're at, and, and kind of get that immediate feedback and that immediate uh, ability to address the situation. Yeah, so so from a a, a post game screen, um, it, it's it's so very much your 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 clinical your medical medical screen. We do uh, you know various um, groin squeezes. We do um, you know, we're fortunate enough to have a a Nord board, so we will isometric um, test them rather than as an actual Nordic lure. We'll just do a um, an isometric hamstring test, 
yeah, sure. as if it's the bottom of the Nordic and just hold at the bottom um, you know, for five seconds. And that's, you know, whether that gives us any more than a normal Nordic, um, we're still finding out, but that's, that's okay. Um, we'll, we, we will, we will work that out. Um, you know, we, we will, we'll jump them midweek. Um, you know, and, and I guess, you know, that's the, the, the thing with, with what we do is, you know, we, we will regularly mid thigh pull, um, from a strength pers- performance point of view. Um, and we'll do that as just, you know, instead of your, your first set of back squats on a Wednesday, you'll do mid thigh pull. Mm-hmm. And if we need to get two sets, we get two sets. Um, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no issue there. Um, but we try and we try and tease that into our sessions as much as possible. Um, you know, and I guess it's all part of the, you know, we all we all bring our, our different skills and our different information to the to the melting pot, which um, which we deal with, and a lot of it's um, reflective of the output from the game previous. Right. But then also it it ties into what we need to then do to make sure that they're ready for the week ahead. Um, whether that's you know they've they've really smashed it in the game. And they need to have a little bit of a, a lower week to make sure we don't overcook them, you know, from a an acute acute chronic point of view, which is obviously the right. the, the buzzwords at the moment. But um, you know, there's also and and what you know Tim and what everybody else would say is that you know there's also this, the case where well, what if they're you know it's a it's a wet rainy day, low scoring, not as much output. Well, then that means during the week we've got an opportunity or we should be taking that opportunity to make sure that we keep our fitness levels right. up. And that goes from the strength room right down to, you know, out on the field right. when we're doing our drills in, during the week. Um, so, yeah, there's there's a lot of those, t- you know, that it's it's building that information profile for each player and for and for what we need. And, again, a lot of, a lot of what we do is reflective of what, they've just done then it also gives you an opportunity to maybe you know see those windows of opportunity to to make some gains as well sure how do you you know obviously you got an educated group and you got to you know you got some professional players there you know but how do you not or how do you keep the external you know sleep nutrition you know all the things that can affect that power output or you know that can affect or skew those results how do you let that be how do you prevent that from becoming a factor, you know, with, with dictating your programming? I mean, if somebody's not living right off the field, you don't want to, you don't want to either regress the programming because of that or, you know, um, or, or, or alter what you're trying to do too much. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's the, you know, whether you use the analogy of the big rocks, you know, and, and you know, I don't sit here and program into the, the small hours of the morning or get up early and do things for some dickhead to have not slept the night before excuse my french but right. you know that's the type of you know you know and and the boys know that you know they, they you know you can um there's a lot of accountability within the group um from a nutrition point of view in particular um you know they they all know how they should be eating we we keep a real close eye on on the output of that so you know whether it's through skin faults or dexa scans or whatever you know we we, we will regularly keep on top of them and in being in a such a running based sport, you know, a few kilos either way can make such a difference. Um, and, and they, and they understand that as well. And that's even just from a, from an injury point of view, if you put on two, three kilos, plus you've got to run, you've got to carry that for the next 16 Ks, you know, that, that adds up, whether it's through your hips and your groins or your hamstrings or calves or whatever, you know, like that, or you're just not as good. And, We live in a world, unfortunately, or fortunately, that 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 that's just not acceptable. So you know they they have to be on top of things as best they can. And sure, there's loads of education. We get young kids that just know nothing. Right. Um, but that's that that adds to the adds another string to our bow. I said essentially because you're dealing with guys that have been around for ten years, and it's just like you're dealing with a pro team anywhere else in the world. It's you know it's the grizzly stuff. They they know the basics. But then you also get to cut your teeth with, you know, being the educator again, being the high school coach who's dealing with the 18 year old kid or 17, 18 year old kid who's never lived away from home, never done anything. So you've got this wide range of, of players that you have to deal with. Um, and that, that, you know, that keeps it exciting for us and challenging because you, you do have to keep that skill set. You can't just, you know, be the guy that comes in and, and screams and makes them lift heavy or makes them, makes them work hard. It's all about being able to nurture the guys 
in in some sessions, but then also be able to to smash them as well. So right, that right. that that and and it is you know I, as again it's, a, it's a, it is a cliche answer, but there's a lot of accountability across the group. You know, That's if, good. If someone does something wrong, it's well, why did your housemate let you do that? You know, right. Why you, you know why why are you letting him? Sure. Do that, you know why is he why are you why are you putting him to bed or why don't you know why why is he staying up whenever he should be you know he should be getting some sleep or you know the guys that sleep in but live together so one guy's there on time but the other guy isn't why didn't you wake the other guy up and give him breakfast you know it's those types of things you know you it, it it's 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 a real interesting environment but but they do a great job of it right no uh, I couldn't agree with you more. I think I've read before that you know you program in four week blocks, but then you kind of you cycle in kind of two week cycles. Mm. You know, um, obviously, if you're in a say a strength block, you know you've got your four weeks written out. You know how how are you manipulating in those two week cycles? Let's say you know two weeks in, you're not getting the 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 the, the output that you're looking for. What kind of modifications are you completely, you know? throw the you know the you know the baby out with the bathwater, or are you or are you just making small tweaks to kind of see if there's something that can be done in those next two weeks yeah it's probably it's, it's probably a mixture of both sometimes and, and i'll make a big deal out of throwing the the baby out right. and you know i'll tell them i had to rip that program up because you you guys weren't good enough the last two weeks right and and really you know it's the you know i'm not angry i'm just disappointed you know that that that's nearly as that's that is as potent whenever sure. you're someone like me like me who's who's never stopped smiling at them. Um, you know that's that that makes a difference, and right. they and they really pull their finger out. Um, and sometimes you know it's, that's a little bit of bravado. It maybe just didn't work. Right. Um, but I guess that you know the small mod- mod- modifications happen all the time. So, you know, I, I I like to keep, you know, the the exercise stream might be the same but the you know the, the just the choices that we make whether we're trying to do more of a skill-based lift where we're you know looking at your sort of you know the stuff you see on on youtube you know you see the the franz bosch type work and we maybe just keep recycling through that because it's more of a um, a motor learning um environment we're trying to get rather than a physiological output which is you know your back squats your deadlifts your rdls your Nordics, that type, you know, bench press, you know, that's where we're really just trying to get big, right? You know, mechanical gains. Whereas when we're trying to be a little bit finessey and we're trying to get more of the myelin coding our, our movement patterns, we we will continually keep changing them just to keep that variability alive. Yeah. And absolutely, we you know, there's repetition within it, but it's we're just trying to change the goalposts slightly, so we're continually challenging and reaching right. for those goals and and trying to, I guess. Trying to appease a few schools of thought with with one um, with one program, so that the continual um, you know changes are, are really good. Um, and even just from a practical point of view, whenever you know there's two weeks means you've at least had two games played, and you know you know what it's like in a collision based sport. There's there's always going to be modifications made, and I'd rather have control of those and have a little bit of thought into what we're doing rather than just letting it go. So you know. Whatever the injury has happens to be, you know, we'll always try and get around it. Um, and around it means you're know, still being strong, lifting as best we can within that right. pattern. But you know, we just have to to make those make those changes on the on the spot. Um, you know, whether it's we just change the the amplitude. You know, so we're going from a full back squat, we're going to quarter squats, but they know that they have to load the crap out of it. Then you know, they know it's you know, it's an extra forty percent on their one RM before we even get somewhere. Right, sexy for them to get those gains, and you know we, yeah, they, they enjoy that as well as you know everyone likes to you know see the bar bend and sure. bounce around a bit, you know like that 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 makes them feel good as well, even when they're a little bit sore, you know that that that's 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 been a big in season goal for us. You know, we, we, you're coming off of a what we would probably call a reset period not too long ago, you know, you know before preseason started, where you know they're they're they got some off time. Um, or you have some different periods throughout the year where you know they, they need to get away a little bit, or it's a downtime or an unload time. What is there anything that you're doing that you would say is unique with your reset periods um, for your athletes? I mean, everybody talks again about you know sleeping right, eating right, unloading, you know, doing those types of things. But is there anything that you feel like is a a, a difference maker? 
I, I, I don't want to be just big headed to say that there's any difference makers, but I think it's doing the simple things and just being, you know, as I said before, but you know, we've got a, we've got a roadmap that we're on and uh, you know, we've got this time off and a time away from the club. So to be honest, as long as they're coming back in good shape, I, I'm not, you know, we've, you know, whether they're doing, you know, any sessions they want, you know, they can go and have fun, go have, you know, when you go back home, train with your mates, do what you want. But as, you know, we're not looking for those big gains to be made. It's different to, to the NFL or college or, or any of the American sports where we can actually get a lot of time with our guys in preseason. Right. So, you know, as long as they're in a, I, I talk about it being a reset. So the one thing we'll, we'll be really hard on is coming back with niggly injuries. So stupid stuff, you know. Right. Uh, I went bench pressed with my mates and it just went too heavy. Well, that's your fault, you idiots. You know, whereas if you're coming back and I don't care if you're necessarily, you know, massive improvements. Right. You know, there's there's always those years that people bump up, you know, but and again, you know, just by being being a bit a bit um cerebral about it, a bit calm about it, it's actually ended up you know, we're getting you know, and, and I'm really excited about the gains that we make per year. You know, so our guys are coming back this year. You know, our mid thigh pool scores from day one are you know thirteen, fourteen percent greater across our squad than wow. they were th- that time last year. You know, you know, we're, we're we're just making those. You know, it's about slow drip processes. Just making those gains over the over the over the long term. That's the true gains, rather than you know being this hero that comes back and does a four week program and they all get stronger. Well, they were going to do that anyway. But if we're starting at a better block, and you know, just, you know, we're going to smack you know because we have a long time with them. It's hard. Right. It's a grind. So you know, make sure you make sure you water ski as much as you want beforehand. Yeah. Make sure you go and swing off a tree and you know have fun, go out, do all sorts of things. But make sure you're ready when you come back. Don't right. be regretting, you know, because you're going to be working. You're going to be asleep by eight o'clock every night. You're going to be. You're going to be in the grind from day one, so you sure. you've got to make sure you get that out of your system. And I think from a mental refresh point of view, it makes you a better human if you're out there. You're a bit more, you know, you've a bit more diverse experiences in life and that side of things. So we expect them to travel, expect them to do some cool stuff, and you know, it, it's what makes them good humans. Right. Um, and that's that's what we want as well. So yeah, you know, great. Trying to balance everything up, but understanding that you know we do have time with them when they come back. So. You know, we don't don't compromise on on base baseline strength levels, on baseline movement, competency. Um, and as long as they're coming back like that, then then we can make some big big gains once they get once they get back in with us. Yeah, sure. Well, man, I know you got to get going to work here. We we always end the show with some resources. Give us the best piece of coaching advice you ever received. Uh, I think I think you know. And again, I've got through without swearing too much, um, which probably that no dickhead rule. Um, yeah. You don't want to be that guy. Um, that's probably the biggest thing for me. Um, if you get that right, and the players and the coaches know that, then you can you can do pretty much anything you want, and that's when your technical skills can really come out. Um, so it's probably you know the the biggest piece of advice. You know, I've obviously you know, I've talked about my mistakes and things that I've made, but I think that you know being a really good human, you just can't trump that. You just right. can't. No, I agree with you, one hundred percent. What about a uh, a book, app, and website recommendation? Yeah, so um, book, um, I may be jumping on the bandwagon a little bit um, at the moment, but you know, there's um, Ryan Holiday's Obstacle is the Way. It's probably the book that really stood out in the last six months for me. Um, it changed. I mean, you listen to it on the way into work, and it it changed my mindset going into work. Um, so it's pretty powerful from that point of view. Um, another book that has I've recently just finished is um, by Damien Hughes, which is the Five Steps to Winning a Winning Mindset. Which is um, it's a from a communicator point of view and from a coaching point of view, it, it made a difference um, to me. Um, you know, some really good stories about Sir Alex Ferguson from Manchester United, and lots of boxing stories in there as well. Mm. Some really really interesting um, stories. So it's it's more about how sport influences business. You know. Us, us sporty people are more, we don't mind reading a business book to, to think that we're doing some leadership work but I right. think we forget that actually sport has an all to offer um, everyone else in the world as well so 
I think that they, that's a real nice take on it, I and mean, it's a, it's a real must-read book. That's what makes sport great. I agree with you 100%. What about a website and an app? Um, website, I'll cheat a little bit, um, and I'll go with um, Feedly. So Feedly ties all your favorite websites together. Um, so it's like the old RSS reader or right. Google reader um, before it, it got it got binned. Um, but it's a really um, – it's it's been really nice for me just – so rather than having to click through my favorites – it's just all there in one spot, which is which has been really good. Um, an app, um, I use Evernote every day, um, whether it's on my computer, on my phone, just keeps notes, you know, ideas when you're when you're in the, on the way into work, or you know, just how you how you're going to set up the next programs or presentations or you know, right. all those types of things. Um, your to do lists, that sort of stuff. Um, and then I've recently got into Trello a little bit. It looks exciting. I'm not quite sure how I can use it um, slickly yet, um, but from a project management point of view, and you know, I guess that's you know, it is essentially what we are in right. it as well. So um, I think it's got it's got a little bit of value. Um, I'm just, I said, I'm just sort of finding my feet with it. Um, so yeah, uh, that might be something that people might want to explore a little bit too. Absolutely, Trello is Trello is my number one app. I, I absolutely love it. You got to use mm-hmm. it. You got to use it in conjunction with. Um, uh, Robert Allen's getting things done system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I did a video on that. So anybody listening, um, you know, go to YouTube and just search my name and Trello and it should pop up on how I use it. But in terms of exactly what you're saying, content management, uh, with your staff and with the uh, program, mm-hmm. I think it's, it's a, it's a godsend for sure. But awesome. well, man, well, man, I know mm-hmm. you're, you, you got to get going. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing with everybody. I know everybody will get a ton out of this and, just uh, appreciate you for the you know the way you're doing uh, you know going about this business and 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 being able sharing so freely and obviously you guys are, are a fantastic program and doing it the right way and uh, for people to be able to get a glimpse of that is fantastic so thanks so much man. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you for having me. I, I really I really do. I'm very honored to be a part of the the, this, the distinguished list of the guys that have been on this. It's been awesome. Appreciate that. That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk. Thanks to this week's guest as well as our sponsors for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out ronmckeefree.com where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefrey can be found on Twitter at rmckeefrey, on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash ron.mckeefrey. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk.